Hey, Sneakless back tonight. Tonight we've got the Tiny Core 3.5, just been released a couple of days ago. I thought I'd give a quick look for it. There's not much change in the visuals of it, really. Everything that's changed is under the hood. Now, I would say it's got even faster as well. So, yeah, pretty cool. Now, you know I really do like it anyway. I know some of you have been having a few problems with it, but you do have to work for it. But anyway, we'll just go through it. Now, as you can see, I've done a semi-install, which is basically a save file. So it just boots up from the disk or USB and whoosh, off you go. Now, as you can see, I've added a few programs to my bar and my system. So I've got Xford Cap for screen capturing, and Pigeon for pigeoning. Where have I gone? It's gone. There it is. Dead Beef for dead beefing. Chromium is my web browser, and I've just put in Abbey Word as well. Now, as you can see, I've made these icons really, really large. So I'll show you how I've done that, actually. So you go to your panel, and you go to your Wubba Config, which just configures your bar, basically. And you can say where you want everything. So I'm going to change the size down to a bit smaller, and I'm going to change the widget by zoom size a bit smaller, too. So I can just apply that now, and you'll see the difference. There you go. See what I mean? All different. You can change it all what you want to do. Now, say I didn't actually want that on the bottom, and I want it on the right. Put it on the right. Whoosh over the top. There you go. Super duper. Well, I like it anyway. That's how you do that. So that's okay. I'm going to leave it over there on the right hand side. Also, in your control panel, you can do your network, date, and time. I've shown you a lot of this before, but if you haven't ever seen anything for Tiny Core, this is how it works basically. You've got your backup and restore, your apps audit. You can do stuff for your floppies, a mount tool, and a mouse tool. So, system stats. I'll click on it for you. This basically tells you what your system is. So you can see I've got uh, the dual core test machine today. There you go, tells you all about it. Bloody bloody blah. There's the amount of memory I'm using. Loads. So it's no, it's, this one's not going to go bang. Now Tiny Core will run hardly any memory at all, especially if you use your G-parted disk first, and then give it loads of swaps. So say you've got a, well, for instance, a 20 gig old disk. If you gave it two gig swap, that's lovely. It'll run really really fine. No bleeding problem there. Also, processors, there's all the processors are going down. Okay, file systems, the file systems, boot, that's the boot stuff. Nice. Here's all the stuff I've actually installed. When you install a program in TinyCore, it actually gets all the dependencies for you as well, which is another bit I really like about it. Now, I know some of you have had a few problems with it, but no, you know, nobody's got back to me about two big things. But hey, never mind. And I've got no big home files left, okay? So that's that bit out of the way. Oh, wallpaper, I've shown you this before as well. You can basically change the colour. So I say I want to change the colour. You just move the icon wherever you want it to go. Enough said. All done. That's that out of the way. Right. For installing, unless you want to do a bit of command line to install to a proper hard disk, a USB hard disk install is the one to go for. So if I click there, this is the stuff it is. So if you want an EXT, must support USB hard disk booting. Same for this one. Must support USB hard disk booting. And the Fusion Zip, same again. So really, you really need to spend that six minutes where it takes to use the command line to install it to your drive properly. You know what I'm saying? Of course you do. I've also got hybrid mode. This is one I use at the moment where you select a file for everything to go to and go from there. Nice, easy to do. A bit like Puppy where you say you do a frugal puppy. Very similar. Terminal server, swap file tool. Now I already made my swap file using Gparted, so that was a lot easier for me. And if you can't get the right screen resolution, you just click on Xfessor and there you go. That was easy, wasn't it? Okay, where else can we go? Actually, I've installed these programs anyway, so if we go to apps, I'll show you again. There's a few new apps in the repos at the moment, which I found was really nice. Yeah, I mean it, really, really nice. Oh, yeah, it's lovely. There's lots and lots and lots of stuff in here. Now, you can have any browser you want. You can have LXDE as your desktop. You can have GNOME as your desktop. I couldn't actually get KDE to work, to be honest. And I, you know, didn't do anything for me. For your music player, you can have Audacious if you really wanted to. I'll just drag it down so you can see a few more. You can get K3B down there if you really wanted to. And basically, all you do, so if we go down a bit more, okay, a bit more so find something small or something on it. We went past LXD there, as you see. We'll go down a bit further and further. Recode's there. Record my desktop is there also. <clears throat> now, basically, all you do if you want to install a program on TinyCore, whether you're doing a full install, a frugal, or whatever you want to call it, just click on one of the things here, so I'll go to the GTK one, because I'm more familiar, I'm not really into the other one really. And there it is, there you go, it shows you what it wants, it does work, no really, no, I'm telling you, it does work. When you want it, you just click on go, yes, that's all you do, it will download the program and all its dependencies and everything it needs, nice. 
So yeah, that's all right. And as you see over here, I've got dead meat, dead meat, dead beef as my music player. So if I click on it, you'll see what I mean. There it is. Now you do have to install Elsa or OSS manually to get any audio. But once you've done it once, you don't have to do it again, basically, because it will run for also Chromium and the web stuff and your pigeon stuff and the stuff stuff and stuff stuff too. So yeah. Now I was going to put Audacious in, but I thought, I'll give dead beef another go. I mean, I've played with it a little while now. I'm growing, it's, it's growing on me a little bit. Not too much. So anyway, well I'm up Chromium. So ba -ba -ba -bum -ba -bum -ba. Chromium comes up. There you go. I've not actually done much of it. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to type in Tiny Core. If I can spell tonight. There we go. Tiny Core comes up. There we go. We go to the site. Now, it's, everything's here. Now when you go to the forums, some people have said to me, there's a few problems in the forums and they don't want to answer. I've never found that personally myself. I've always got good answers myself. As long as you, you don't go down, you, you don't know nothing at all. If you're not new to Linux, sorry, if you are new to Linux, don't try this one first. Try a different micro disco or small disco like Slytaz or Puppy Linux. Or go back in time and use DSL if you can still find it. It's still out there on the net if you want to just give DSL a chance. It's nice. It's not updated anymore. I think some of the guys have come over from DSL to here anyway, as far as I remember. So, yeah, that's all right, wasn't it? Now, for installation, I'm not sure if I updated this. Basically, if you want to print all this out and go from there, it does everything you want to show you how to install it. Or I have done a video on how to install it myself. It does work. Yes, you may pull up on the way or make a mistake, but hey, it only takes five minutes once you've got it all done. And you've got a full install. And I found this version runs really, really fast. Even faster than the last one. Yes, it does. No, I mean it. No, it really does. Of course, I've installed Abbey Word. You can get other wire processors for it. There's not too many in the repos for here. It does work. Now, I had a bit of trouble with my printer this time around. I might normally in one. I've got an HP F4722 or something like that. It had trouble finding it, but it got there in the end. So, that was alright for me. So, yeah. Tiny Core Linux. Nice. Nice update. I like it. I think you should too. Give it a go. If you don't even want to install it on a system, give it a go in VirtualBox or whatever virtualization machine you're using. And give it a try. It takes seconds. I really mean seconds. And once you've installed all the stuff, and if you do like a frugal or whatever you want to call it, or whatever they want to call it, you can just keep it in virtual box. The download's 10 meg. You can keep the hard drive, say your virtual hard drive, so say 2 gig. So that's a tiny thing. That's really nice. What more can I say? Really nice update. Not too many new features, but I'm expecting a bit more from the next one. So we'll see what happens there. Sneaky Linux out. I see you later. Bye bye.